Hey you guys, it's Therese and welcome back to my channel. Today is me filming and uploading this video on the same day because I thought that I wouldn't have a chance to finish it before this week ended because I ha it's another currently reading situation but somehow I had a lot of free time at work these past few days and I've been reading so I went from like 25% of the book to nearly 80%. So chances are I'm gonna finish this book by the end of the week. So we're gonna film now. But if you guys don't follow me on Goodreads or um, I think on Twitter, I have posted about this book. This is a reread for me. And that is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkins. And I have like a handful of things to say. So this shouldn't be a super long video. But it shouldn't be an obscenely short one. So let's get into it. I also wore lipstick for once because I always forget to wear lipstick because I always end up eating or drinking beforehand. And I had cookies before I started filming. So I had to reapply because this is a common thing with me. That's why I can't wear lipstick very often. For those of you guys who don't know, um, A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkins follows this young witch who's about, I'm assuming like in her late 20s, named Diana Bishop who has spent most of her life after the tragic death of her parents at age like what, seven? Hiding away from her power, she is now a very well-off professor at Oxford and she's do running, um, she's doing research on something, she loves alchemy, she's a historian, all that kind of stuff until she stumbles upon a manuscript that has been long since forgotten and hidden away that attracts all the kind of problems that she doesn't want for herself, including a very attractive and seductive French vampire named Matthew Claremont? Claremont. Claremont. So it's a romance, and I forget when this was published, because I think I bought it several years after. Pretty sure it's like around the time of... Twilight-ish? 2011. So yeah, about the Twilight-ish. It's an adult fantasy, urban fantasy book. Very interesting. But let's just kind of jump into my thoughts. Because this is a reread. So I, I'm fairly familiar, but I haven't read this book since I was a freshman in high school. So about four to five years now, I'm trying to finish out the series. I am definitely enjoying the book. I love diving back into the world of like vampires and witches and like those steamy romances. Especially since this is an adult um, novel, we get to have a bit more of like the forbidden fruit in terms of like literally everything because, you know, we don't have as many restrictions as we do in YA for like this kind of scenario. I'm really loving the progression of the characters and how the story is going. We don't get a huge info dump of like history. It's very much peppered throughout the book and there's a lot of pages. This is like a chunky. It's like a 600 page book, 500, uh, I'm gonna say 600, 600 page book that um, encompasses this like in a span of a few weeks. So it's a lot of like, it could be a lot of info dumping, but it's more or less a lot of um, information. They're randomly peppered through about the characters, the story, and everything whatnot. One of my, uh, this is something I didn't notice when first reading this book, but one of my biggest like takeaways or like realizations is that it definitely follows the whole like very, that like progression of like stories where like the characters find something out and then it calms down, then they find something out and then it calms down and then it's like continues up and down to a very specific T. Like not a lot of the um, things that we are told are necessarily resolved. It's kind of like we found something out, calming down, found something out, calming down found something out and there's no end in sight it's just a lot of like random facts going in and while that is really I, I don't mind that like formula it does get really tiring at times because I would like for once to see something completed <laughs> um, it's I am about like I think 80% of the book and I also the Kindle version which is the one that I'm reading because she this is chunky so it's just very kind of annoying because we have found a lot of things out in the span of like the 80% that I have read and I don't see a resolution in sight and this is the first book to a trilogy but I still feel like there should be some resolution in some aspects of the book to like help push the story along so we're not stuck on the same like plot twist every five seconds. And it's just really overwhelming to have to deal with so many like random twists and turns and like mysteries to have to figure out as well as on top of like the romance and like how that's gonna work out because she's a witch and he's a vampire 
and I guess it's against the, the laws or something, as well as this random book that's supposed to tell them about the entire, like, creation of, like, the vampires and the demons and the witches and the humans, and why now, like, the, the creatures are in the minority and the humans are in the majority, and it's just really odd. So I would really like to see some resolution, but I have like 20% left, so I don't know if any of those storylines will ever get um, re resolved in this book. It might be in the next book, but even then I remember reading the, rec the second book and still being very confused, because that somehow involves time travel. I'm really, 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 really torn on Matthew, who is a love interest. He's like a 1,500-year-old vampire. He's French, but has an Oxbridge accent. So he's very sexy, he's like 37, so like, I can finally like, stare at him, but I can't really be like, yep, we'll take him to bed, because sadly, my ethics are like, you probably shouldn't date someone that's like, 12 years older than you, even though Chris Evans is 12 years older than me, but it's fine, I will break the rules solely for him, but anyway, he, a lot of his dialogue, just screams like Edward Cullen to me. He's always like the broody like, you must not fall in love with me, I am dangerous. And it's like, you're a vampire. We know. We all read Twilight. We know. And like, it's just very annoying to have to hear the same like, I am a dangerous person. You mustn't fall in love with me. But it's also like, we know where the book's going. We know what she's gonna do. Why? What's the point? in like having that warning. There is no point. And it's just really annoying because it's like, for once in my lifetime, I would like to see a book where the girl finds out, or well she knows about vampires existing, but D Diana doesn't have much knowledge in vampires because she's been pushing aside this like part of her for like a good 20-ish years. But anyway, sh I would like to see a time where we see the girl finds out he's a vampire and realizes, oh, he could be dangerous and has to struggle with the fact that he is dangerous and could kill her. Or she. Maybe we'll get a lesbian vampire. Or a gender-switched kind of situation. But in, a, like, in that situation, I don't want to hear from the vampire. I want to see the main character think about it. But this entire time, Diana goes, no, I know he's dangerous, but he's not a danger to me. And it's like, girl... <laughs> Girl, in what world? In what world? That's where I'm struggling because it's very much like a, a twilight situation between them where it's like the forbidden apple. We can't have it because you are dangerous and I am blah 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 blah. And then they go and like bundle in like, I don't know. It, I, it's just, I'm, it's very hard for me to enjoy Matthew even though like 2014 Therese, 2011 Therese would have been like, sexy vampire? I think yes. Which in some case she still, I still do. But it's just like, I would really like it if we didn't go with the whole like, I am dangerous trope. Like, I'm over it. I want it to be like, the girl has to think about it without the warning, like, you know, common sense thinking. Or like, maybe for once, he doesn't think about how dangerous he's gonna be. He's like, you know, I'm dangerous. I know I'm not gonna warn you, but this is where we are. And that's where it goes because I'm. I'm very, very, very tired of that trope. What was the other thing I had issues with this one? Oh yeah, so this is a recent development of mine, but like I said in the beginning, or like early on, I'm really overwhelmed with the amount of plot twists that are going on. I understand this is a bigger part of like the first book in a trilogy, but there's a lot that we're learning about in the span of like 600 pages. Even for an adult novel, I feel like it's a lot of like plot twist after plot twist after plot twist and it's just very annoying to have to sit there and like watch Diana be essentially like a damsel in distress because she has no control over her powers, no idea how to use them, doesn't feel the need to, and keeps saying no I'm self-reliant, I can do this without them and then she gets captured and tortured and you're just like, are you sure? You positive? Because I think you need them literally all the vampires and the witches you've met says you need them so maybe it's time to just mm, you need them and on top of that there's just a lot of different layers I don't know how it's gonna come together in the third book or in the second book or any of the books really because it's just a lot of random things going on that will build up to something 
but then we never get the resolution for any of them. Like it's just plot twist after 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 plot twist. And it's a lot. Like it's enjoyable, but it's now to the point where I'm like flipping through the pages and like, when's the next plot twist? Because I would really like to under like have something concretely be resolved in the first book. And right now the only thing that is resolved is the fact that they're in love. And they're gonna make it work. Because like we haven't found out who killed her parents, we haven't found out why she has so many powers, we haven't found out why the congregation has this or what the, ac the manuscript actually does, what the meaning of life is, or any of that. We're just getting a lot of plot twists and it's a lot of like combinations in there that doesn't really make sense in my tiny, teeny, tiny little brain because I'm trying to figure out where this is all going and I'm just like, yep, we found out she can time travel. This is fine. Like, it's just, it's a lot. And I am enjoying the book. I am. And I'm sure that when I finish the series, I will enjoy it even further because stories progress and they get better and all that stuff. However, I'm just, it's a lot. Like, not gonna lie, like, in the beginning it was kind of slow and I was like, oh, they're building up. And now it's like she has multiple genetic markers for things. She, like, her mom had visions of Matthew coming into her life and, like, bound her powers. She can fly and do witch water and witch fire and people want want to crack her open like a walnut and see like how her powers work but they somehow thought that it was her dad so they killed her dad and her mom in Nigeria and like now she can time travel and there are ghosts in there and like I know where this goes so I know that we're gonna find out that she has to time travel and they have to have a baby and there's just random things in here that doesn't make sense to me and I have to make it sense and I just wish something was resolved so I could, so it's just easier for me to process the rest of the random ass plot twists that'll eventually come together in the third book. I hope. I don't get it. I would like some information here. But I don't. And it's just like, but why? So I will give you guys a wonderful up update on how I am feeling <laughs> once I finish this book, probably like the next day. But yeah, that is kind of my thoughts as I'm actually currently reading, I didn't finish it this time, A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkins. Um, like I said, I'll probably, when I finish the book, I'll have a Goodreads review, so keep an eye out for that if you guys don't follow me on Goodreads or my wrap-up, which will be coming in like a weekish. Yeah, like next week, it'll come. So until then, all my social meetings will be down below. I did, I'm trying to be more pot, like, more active on my blog so I did leave my newest blog post down below as well if that is up by the time this video goes up but until then I'll talk to you guys everywhere else and I hope you guys are having a great day and if you have read this book please tell me please confirm that I am not the only one that is kind of overwhelmed with the amount of plot twists that are going on like it feels like it should be like a CW show with the amount of like random little plot twists that keep popping back in here but maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm crazy so we'll let a girl know but until then I'll see you guys everywhere else bye